If Tyneside has an anthem, it's the Bladen Races. The sound of the most powerful regional identity in Britain. The sound of lads and lasses that know who they are and where they come from. And this series of programmes will tell the story of how we all got here. The story of Tyneside. It's an epic and immense tale, ranging from the very beginnings of human society to the everyday dramas of the present day. We'll also tell you the story of how we came to be called Geordies, how we hacked the coal out of the ground and sparked the Industrial Revolution, how we invented the light bulb to see what we were doing, train travel so people could get here, and a million other things. And we'll look for a definition of exactly what it means to be a Geordie. Someone has to be born in Newcastle to be a Geordie. Working on the river, loving the football. I think we're very friendly, um, helpful. People think that from around here are rough, but they're not uh, good people, and I'm, I'm proud to have a son grown up around here. It's passed down from your fathers for generations. It's just, it's something we are. It's great to come back to, to see the angel when you come back, when you're away. It's great to see the bridges. It's just, it's great. No matter how far the travel, you're still a Geordie. I do feel proud, wherever I go, I feel proud. Well, when you think about it, there's lots of different famous people come from there uh, that you don't really know about. I can deck lived, yeah. Now let's go back to the beginning. The very beginning. At Howick Bay near Annick, Traces of the oldest house in Britain were recently discovered. It was built sometime around 7,800 BC, nearly 10,000 years ago. Archaeologists found the remains of halls where posts had held up the house and burned patches of soil where fires had been lit. Although the sea had eroded its original position, the ancient house has now been recreated just yards away and it was a big house. The house at Howick's absolutely remarkable because it completely reorganises the way in which we think about the pioneers. In essence, we used to believe that these were people who just flitted through the woods, who, who lived in caves, who made shelters, who had no real presence in the landscape. But the discovery of this house has changed all of that. It's a substantial building made out of tree trunks with people who understood building technology and it housed a family. And by planting a house in the landscape, what these people are saying is, we've got rights over the land around here. And these are rights to harvest the berries in the wood, to gather hazelnuts, to hunt for animals in the woods, for wild pig. And the seashore was a very good place to live. From the evidence from excavations at Tarek, we know that the population there was exploiting the natural resources of the landscape. We have, for example, um, limpet shells. We know that they were um, picking uh, rock pools and getting any resource they killed from there. But also, rather nasty looking pieces of charred uh, hazelnut shell, which would have started off, of course, looking like that. We know that they were charring large quantities of hazelnuts so they could keep it through the winter. But also, they found quite a number of stone artefacts like this, which may have been used as limpet scoops for getting limpets off the rocks, but also for preparing seal skins, because seal skins were needed for clothing, for uh, possibly roofing. So although this is a rather plain looking stone, this would have been an absolutely vital tool for somebody living at Howick.